Hi, I'm going to try to uh, continue this thing. I believe this is part 10 of uh, my novel called uh, The Black Rock Redemption, also known as All This New Black Rock. All This New Black Rock is uh, uncut, whereas The Black Rock Redemption is cut and is more child friendly, I guess you could say. Okay. I'll read back a little bit. And, and that is why you decided to give reference to those paper plates and put that up there, asked Rockman, looking as if the bartender was nuts. Oh, no. Besides that little uh, painted uh, tile uh, was a clear sandwich bag with a long strip of videotape in it, a picture of a UFO destroying a city, and a note that seemed to be, seemed to be directions to some place. It turned out that the picture of the UFO destroying city was the first part of a picture book created by a person or persons who flew the frisbee-like packet into my Burning Man camp. Anyway, I had no idea what was on that videotape for the longest time. The instructions in the packet were telling me, were telling one how to hook it up in a cassette tape. Trouble is, by the time I discovered this strip of videotape. Videotapes were on their way out. I had to go to a thrift store to buy an old v old VCR and buy an old video cassette to be one of the steps to play it. Well, I finally followed the instructions in the packet, uh, hooked it up, and played it. What was on it? asked Rockman. The bartender thought for a while then said, I think the creator of the packet and tape must have been a huge, crazy fan of the movie 2001 Space Odyssey. That's all I can say. For in that movie, they find a black monolith on the moon, and in the packet, you find a little black object resembling the structure depict, resembling that structure depicted in the movie. Got to change that. Yeah. Oops. Yeah. And, asked Rockman, well, in the movie, when the astronauts are walking about the creepy black monolith they dug up on the moon, it suddenly gives off a radio signal that is being broadcast toward Jupiter. In other words, it was an alien device trying to get us to Jupiter to encounter something much larger and more grand than we are. Some might call it God. Or Allah, asked, or said, said Rahman. Or aliens for far more evolved than us, said the bartender with a smile. <coughs> the bartender went on and said, Whoever created this must have been trying to create a role, was, must have been trying to create the role of the monolith from the movie, but bringing it to life in our reality. It was the year 2001 that those paper flying saucers were launched at Burning Man, for one thing. Instead of having one, having a one-way radio broadcast from an ancient monolith to Jupiter, like in that science fiction movie, well, uh, when that videotape was hooked up, there was the image of this guy saying a repeated sentence over and over again, over and over, till the video ran out. Uh, what is that? asked Rothman, feeling kind of scared. The bartender walked over to his cashier cashier machine, then came back in came back in a came back with a C, then came back with a CD in his hands. He then put it into an old dusty DVD player and said, "The video tape is still on the video cassette I hooked up to I hooked it up to after seeing what it said I later made a DVD out of it this is a copy of it the videotape is old and the dust of the black rock desert didn't help it but this is the message this is the message it has the guy saying but this is but this is 
the message it has the guy saying. When the bartender pressed the button, a grainy, snowy image of the face of the man showed up. It became more and more clear as the video tape continued. The bartender turned up the volume as Mr. Rothman could, so Mr. Rothman could hear it. Messages from the edge of Earth are coming. Messages from the edge of Earth are coming, said the man on the tape. Right when he was about to say it for the seventh time, the tape ran out. Rothman smiled and said, What do you think of that? What do you think it means? Bartender said, As the block, as the black monolith from 2001 was fictionally, was fictionally pointing us to Jupiter, I think this guy was pointing us to the seacoast. I could be wrong, but I think the same kind of packets he and possibly others launched at Burning Man 2001 might have been launched on the sea on the coastal highway of California. If so, why? asked Rothman. I have no idea. In the movie 2001, a birth of a supernatural entity takes place. A new and evolved type of human being called the Star Child, helped along by an alien influence. From what, I, from, from what is located in the instructions, I came away uh, that the guy may have been a born again Christian influenced by Arthur C. Clarke and that he felt that even though Arthur C. Clarke was a prophetic gay atheist kind of guy, the, the God made, that, that, that God made Arthur C. Clarke more uh, of a prophet than the world ever imagined. That if one were to follow the instructions of the paper flying saucers tossed into the Burning Man camps of 2001, it may not only lead you to a Christian salvation of being born again when you accepted Christ as your personal Lord and Savior, but that there were further instructions in what was to be launched on the coastal highway, the edge of Earth. Well, that's my theory of it anyway. Do you know what it might have been? asked Rahman. I have no idea. All I know is, is that if he and the possible others that might have been behind him in the launch, I don't know. All I know is, is that if he and the possible others that might have been behind him in the launch, uh, in, in that launch, it was probably far more than just becoming a 2001 star child by becoming born again in Jesus Christ. That maybe, possibly, it was to turn those who would... That, 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 it, that maybe, possibly, it was to turn those who would go out to the coastal highway uh, to become some kind of sleeping, sleeper cells to reveal something the creator of these packets really didn't know if such a message should be revealed to the world. Perhaps the creator of it was leaving up to God to see if any reporter would discover it and run with it, making it a big deal, leaving it up to leaving in God's hands or uh, of whether or not it was to become a big deal. In his instructions, he mentions a, a, mess, a passage of scripture from the Old Testament, a prof, uh, Old Testament um, or a scripture from the Old Testament, prophet Habakkuk, that says something like, uh, write the vision, make it plain upon tablets that he who reads it may run with it. I'm thinking he must have felt he was to run with it and God willing, making it so others would run with it as well. Mr. Rothman looked puzzled and said, so you really don't know what it all means? The bartender said, no, I don't. Which is why I have two paper plates like the one I, like the one I, oh, excuse me, like the one I had, oh, like the one I had, excuse me. Yeah. No, I don't. Which is why I have two paper plates like the one I had all those years ago in the Burning Man camp back in 2001, nailed to the wall there. It's been there for, for four years since I decided to come up here and buy this place. I have a hope that someday those who want to 
those who went to Burning Man 2001 will come back to another Burning Man, see it, tell me that tell me they carried out its instructions, and let me know if they found any more objects like it on the coastal highway. If they say they did, I'll then ask them if there were any further instructions in them, and if so, where it might have led them. So, although such an object looks very hokey, nailed to the wall there like that, I am hoping, though it may be all in vain, that someone from that era will come in here, see it, and tell his or her tale. Right when Mr. Rothman was about to leave the for the Black Rock Desert, a man and woman entered the bar, greeted the bartender, and started talking about something they hit on the Black Rock Desert. It's another computer, said the man. Did it hurt your car? asked the bartender. A little bit, said the wife of the man, but the bartender but 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 the computer is in far worse condition. Lesman said we were driving about on the playa with our hands off the off the off the steering wheel. Uh, by the time, and by the time we saw the computer, well, before we got in control of the car, bam, the old computer went flying. The bartender, Mr. Rothman, and the married couple walked out to the, to the see the computer, which was now located in the trunk of the married couple's car. It turned out that what they struck was indeed. It turned out that what they struck was indeed a computer, a big bulky one, dating back to the turn of the millennium. Although the collision with the computer left a dent in the fender of the car, the computer was in pieces. The bartender laughed and said, This is the third time this crazy sort of thing has happened that I know of. The first time was back in 2010. Whatever's, whoever's putting these things out there on the desert must be doing it more frequently since the last collision with the one was about a month ago. I think I better stop it here. Bye.